Chapter 33 Once again a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give your people this message. When I bring an army against a country, the people of that land choose a watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he blows the alarm to warn the people. Then if those who hear the alarm refuse to take action, well, it is their own fault if they die. They heard the warning but wouldn't listen, so the responsibility is theirs. If they had listened to the warning, they could have saved their lives. But if the watchman sees the enemy coming and doesn't sound the alarm to warn the people, he is responsible for their deaths. They will die in their sins, but I will hold the watchman accountable. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die, and you fail to warn them about changing their ways, then they will die in their sins, but I will hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent, and they don't repent, they will die in their sins, but you will not be held responsible. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. You are saying, Our sins are heavy upon us, we are wasting away, how can we survive? As surely as I live, says the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways, so they can live. Turn! Turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel! Why should you die? Son of man, give your people this message. The good works of righteous people will not save them if they turn to sin, nor will the sins of evil people destroy them if they repent and turn from their sins. When I tell righteous people that they will live, but then they sin, expecting their past righteousness to save them, then none of their good deeds will be remembered. I will destroy them for their sins. And suppose I tell some wicked people that they will surely die, but then they turn from their sins and do what is just and right. For instance, they might give back a borrower's pledge, return what they have stolen, and obey my life-giving laws, no longer doing what is evil. If they do this, then they will surely live and not die. None of their past sins will be brought up again, for they have done what is just and right, and they will surely live. Your people are saying, The Lord is not just, but it is they who are not just. For again I say, When righteous people turn to evil, they will die. But if wicked people turn from their wickedness and do what is just and right, they will live. O people of Israel, you are saying, The Lord is not just, but I will judge each of you according to your deeds. On January 8th, during the twelfth year of our captivity, a man who had escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city is fallen. The previous evening the Lord had taken hold of me and opened my mouth, so I would be able to speak when this man arrived the next morning. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the scattered remnants of Judah living among the ruined cities keep saying, Abraham was only one man, and yet he gained possession of the entire land. We are many. Surely the land should be given to us as a possession. Now give these people this message from the Sovereign Lord. You eat meat with blood in it. You worship idols, and you murder the innocent. Do you really think the land should be yours? Murderers, idolaters, adulterers, should the land belong to you? Give them this message from the Sovereign Lord. As surely as I live, those living in the ruins will die by the sword. Those living in the open fields will be eaten by wild animals. Those hiding in the forts and caves will die of disease. I will destroy the land and demolish her pride. Her arrogant power will come to an end. The mountains of Israel will be so ruined that no one will even travel through them. When I have ruined the land because of their disgusting sins, then they will know that I am the Lord. Son of man, your people are whispering behind your back. They talk about you in their houses and whisper about you at the door, saying, Come on, let's have some fun. Let's go hear the prophet tell us what the Lord is saying. So they come, pretending to be sincere, and sit before you listening. But they have no intention of doing what I tell them. They express love with their mouths, but their hearts seek only after money. You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice, or plays fine music on an instrument. They hear what you say, but they don't do it. But when all these terrible things happen to them, as they certainly will, 
Then they will know a prophet has been among them.